All right, so let's go over how we assess a patient with diabetes so that we can better understand this type of patient when we're starting to kind of get in here soon in class and learn about what diabetes looks like. So um, first we need to know like who's affected, who are the key players in this illness? Um, and with diabetes, the main player is gonna be the pancreas because diabetes is all about either not making enough insulin or any insulin at all, or um, there's a problem with making enough or that there's resistance where even though there's plenty of insulin, it's not working to get glucose into the cell. And we'll talk more about that, but just realize it's all about the pancreas. Um, and then, you know, the liver and the gastrointestinal system are also an important part because they're all about sugar. Because this is, this is a disease process where it's all about insulin and sugar or glucose. And so the liver helps to store and create glucose. So it's going to play a big part. And then the gastrointestinal system as well is all about absorbing um, your glucose. So uh, it's also going to play a part in this illness. So we want to start asking questions. When we have a patient that has diabetes, it's all about managing it. So we really want to know how their diabetes is going. So we can ask them questions like, how long have you had diabetes? Um, you know, is it new or is this something you've had for a while? Has there been any changes recently? We also want to ask, how do they control their blood sugar at home? Are they using medications? Are they using um, oral or um, insulin? Or are they just changing their diet? There's many different ways to manage diabetes. Um, we want to also know if they're monitoring their blood sugar at home. What are they using? Do they, do they have equipment? A lot of people can't afford this equipment, or at least they don't know there's resources out there that they can, but still, regardless, a lot of them don't have it. They, they're not educating it, so we want to see where they're at. We want to meet them where they're at so that we can provide them with all the resources so that they um, don't experience further complications. Um, and then, like, what does their blood sugar normally run? Do they know how to check that? Are they checking it the right way? Um, all that kind of stuff. Just do they know um, the mechanics of their illness on a day-to-day -day basis? What are they doing for their diabetes to monitor it? Um, can they tell when their blood sugar is low or high? If your blood sugar gets too low or too high, you're at the highest risk for complications. So if they can't tell when that's, or if they don't know the common symptoms, they're at higher risk for complications. And then also, do they check their heels daily? Um, we're going to talk later about this, but effectively, we're trying to manage complications in diabetes, and the whole body can be affected. And that includes having a loss of sensation. So checking your heels daily is really important to prevent uh, breakdown and infection infection. Uh, and so we'll talk more about that here in a minute. So like I mentioned, we need to watch the entire body. Um, you know, even if you don't know you have diabetes, like your blood sugar is high for months or years and you don't even know it, you can be already having, experiencing complications from diabetes before you even know you have diabetes. So we need to keep a close eye on the entire body. And that's because diabetes affects blood vessels so intensely. And all that glucose in the blood vessels irritates them and it decreases their functionality or their ability to, you know, do their normal function and it decreases blood flow. And so, you know, there's a, all over the body can be affected, but I'll tell you the, the five most common places that you're going to see complications, like we mentioned, the blood vessels themselves, um, and then the eyes, the heart, the kidneys, and the skin. So we're going to go more into these one-on-one um, -on -one to kind of look at these. So with the eyes, they can commonly have, you know, decreased vision, they can have cat, a higher chance of cataracts and glaucoma, and they can also be at higher risk for what's known as diabetic retinal. Retinopathy. And what diabetic retinopathy is, is effectively it's these little micro aneurysms that form from too much pressure in the eyes. Um, and, you know, uh, like, uh, keep in mind that like when we're taking care of a patient with diabetes, we want to really ask them about their eyesight. Like, are you, how is your eyesight? How are you seeing? Um, we want to make sure also to protect for their safety, because even if they don't really notice a decrease in their vision, we want to make sure that if they're not seeing clearly because of their um, eye problems related to their diabetes, that we're uh, making sure they have a safe environment. We also want to look at, uh, take a close eye on their heart and vascular system, so the heart and the blood vessels. So we want to listen to heart sounds, um, look for dysrhythmias on our EKG. Um, we want to see if there's any edema presence. These patients are really high risk for heart failure. They're also high risk for blood clots, so we want to be looking for signs and symptoms of those. And then a really good peripheral neurovascular, like I mentioned, there can be blood flow issues, decreased perfusion or decreased flow to especially the peripheral, um, the hands and the feet. So so um, we really want to do a good peripheral neurovascular assessment. And we'll talk more about how that relates to skin here in a minute. 
We also want to make sure to uh, take a good look at their kidneys. And when we look at kidneys, we want to look at their labs because our the labs like the creatinine can tell us how well the kidney is functioning. Um, like, are they clearing things from their kidneys? In other words, if I put something in my body, is am I going to be able to pee it out? Or is there something not functioning with my kidneys? But another important question is, and something to monitor is their urine output because that's going to tell us a lot about how their kidneys are functioning. Regardless of how well I'm clearing things out of my kidney, am I able to produce urine? Urine, and that's so important. Um, and, you know, diabetes can affect the blood vessels going into the kidneys and it can irritate them and affect the kidney function, but it also can affect the nerves um, and the nerves that are going to the bladder. It's what's called a neurogenic bladder. Um, and effectively what can happen is, is that um, those messages that usually send to your bladder that say, hey, it's time to empty, they stop working, which means urine just kind of sits in your bladder, which can put you at a higher risk for infection. So uh, something to keep an eye out for. Uh, for skin, patients can't feel because they have what's called diabetic neuropathy and it's paresthesia. So a really important question is asking them about numbness and tingling. Uh, most of them will have numbness and tingling in one of their limbs. And so we want to see what they're not feeling because if they're not feeling it, I need to look because they can't feel if there's going to be something like this on their foot. Um, we want to check those pressure areas, their heels, toes, feet, and any hidden areas where there might be pressure. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's sometimes patients that just never take their shoes off or never look at their feet. Um, also, they're at higher risk for infection and they have delayed healing. So we want to monitor any wounds or scrapes that might just seem like a cut, not a big deal. Um, we need to monitor those more closely because they are not going to manage them. Uh, they're not going to recover the same way that I would recover. Um, other skin problems, and it's not necessarily a problem, but this is more of a sign in your assessment. If you've ever seen people that have kind of dark pigmented um, rashes uh, in their folds of the skin, it's really most common in the armpits, the back of the neck, and it can be behind the knees. Um, and this is actually a sign of insulin resistance. Um, it's actually insulin that is, uh, is um, collecting in the skin in these folds. Um, and so this is something that we can see as an early sign that um, diabetes is either present or coming. And so it's definitely something to take a look at in your assessment to kind of see if your patient doesn't have diabetes, that maybe they may be headed in that direction. Um, we also want to look for complications. So we want to smell that breath because in that breath, if they're experiencing certain complications like diabetic ketoacidosis, they may have presence of ketones. They'll be kind of like a fruity and not a fruity good smell though, it's a fruity acetone kind of smell. Um, and so um, we definitely want to keep an eye out for that and also weigh their breathing. It's what's called Kuzmal's respirations. It's rapid and deep. So it's not, it's, it's, and as much as this seems like it's a bad thing, we're gonna talk about in class how this is actually a compensation and it helps them, but it kind of lets us know as the nurse, hey, something's not right. Um, we also wanna know what, when blood glucose gets high or low, what that looks like. When someone's blood glucose is low, we say cold and clammy, give me candy. So they're going to be like sweaty. Um, they're going to be um, uh, usually hungry. They're going to, uh, we well, could be really tired, confused, decreased kind of level of consciousness. I'm a little out of it. Um, and so they're really not going to be feeling well. Um, whereas with hyperglycemia, they're going to be peeing a lot, drinking a lot and eating a lot. And so um, those are kind of the differences and we'll kind of differentiate those more in class, but we want to kind of know those basic, Hey, when do I need to check my patient's blood? Blood sugar. Speaking of checking labs, we want to always check a white blood cell count to look for infection. We want to do a hemoglobin A1C, which we'll talk about on the next slide, to kind of see how their blood sugar has been over the past few months. Um, do a random glucose level. We can also check an ABG. Um, that ABG is going to help us to see if they're in a state of acidosis, which patients, especially with type 1 diabetes, can get into. And then we want to check their urine. And we're going to talk about yearly exams, but we want to be looking for protein in the urine or presence of albumin because this can be a sign of decreased kidney function. Then of course we want to look at their BMI and their weight to see if we can maybe make lifestyle modifications to improve their diabetes. Um, so the hemoglobin A1C is effectively, it's a measure, it's, one, it's, a, it's a test you can't cheat, and effectively it tells us how much glucose are attached to your hemoglobin. Um, and, you know, since, glu uh, since hemoglobin um, stay in your system for 120 days, it really helps to let us know over time how well our um, blood glucose is. So the patient doesn't need to fast, they can't cheat it, they can't eat good for a week, and then come in and get the test. 
Um, and really what normal is, is um, you know, the, the American Diabetic Association says 7% or less. The American College of Endocrinology says 6.5 or less. We, of course, are always going to go by what your book says. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea of um, what this looks like, generally we really want it less than 6.5 um, and because um, that's really going to show us how well are we controlling our diabetes. That's all I've got. Looking forward to going over this more in class. See you there.